look at a universal set? You're going to draw out what it represents. So I want the universal set are the natural numbers. Less than or equal to 16. So draw the universal set. Universal set, what do we use for a letter? U, U, the fancy U, the horseshoe shaped U. And we start at 1, one and we go to 16. Why 2, 16 and not 15? Because the word equal to. So for this whole question, this is the maximum that I can give you, right? And because I give you the universal set, I can ask for complements. Because complements are what's not in a set. But I can only ask for a complement if I have a big set that limits you in numbers. Okay? So here are your three sets. A are going to be the prime numbers. So I want you to list them beside. And if you're listing them, what do they have to be in? Order is helpful. I would appreciate that. <laughs> they don't have to be in it, but I do like that. If you in brackets, the squiggly brackets. So A are the prime numbers. B are the even numbers. And C are odd numbers. Less than 10. Write out all the different ones. What's my first prime number? One. Two. 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 Why is one not a prime number? It's not. It only has one factor itself. It needs to be two factors, one and the prime number, correct? So one, that's one factor. So if I went 16, if I did the factors of 16, I would go one and 16. 2 and 8, and 4. I wouldn't list 4 twice. You could, but it, it's not going to help you in this it, situation where he's saying 1 is prime. 1's not prime because it's 1 times 1, so the only factor it has is 1, and it needs to have 2. So 1 is not prime. So we have 2, we have 3, not 4. What's 2? Two? 2 is the only what? Even prime, right? So only even. So 2, 3, 5... 7, 11, 13, 15. Done. Okay? Then I have even numbers. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Then I have odd numbers less than 10. 1. Three, five, seven, nine. Okay, you're going to tell me if this is true or not. Not that. That is true. <laughs> We're good. Okay, I want you to tell me if this is true. Don't say it out loud. Just tell me if it's true or not. What does the sideways U mean? Subset. subset. In order for something to be a subset, like, C, yes, C is a subset of A, what has to happen? All of the elements in C need to be in A. All of the elements in C need to be in A. Are all of the elements in C in A? No. no. One isn't and nine isn't. Even if only one of them isn't in it, it's immediately not a subset. Okay? So this is false. I can say false or I can do this. Not a subset. B. Is B a subset of U, the universal? Yes, because it comes from the universal, right? Everything's a subset of the universal, so that's true. What's another thing that's always true? 
things that are subset of itself. Yes. So if I went C is a subset of C, that's true. What else is true? Yes. What else is true? Something with the empty set. Yes, the empty set is a subset of everything. So I, if I start with this empty set, it's a subset of A. That would be true. B, that would be true. C, that would be true. Universal set would be true. Because if there's nothing in it, it's all contained within that letter. Because there's nothing in it. Okay. You give me the answer to this. I'm going to give you four of them. Answer those three. What is this symbol? And. Because I could go and write the word and from it, correct? Another word we could use for it is intersection. Intersection. Intersection works with it. So I want what's in A and in B. And often has less or often has more, right? Because if it's an either or, I list it. And it has to be in both. So for the and, and I'm listing these elements in the squiggly brackets because it does, I'm not asking you for the number of elements in it. I'm not asking you for a little n in front. So you can list them all. So what's in A and in B? Two and that's it. Because two is the only even prime number, right? Now B or C, if it's in B or in C, and I know it's or because if I go to write and, that's stupid. So it's not and, it's or. So we need B or C. So if it's in B or in C, I list it. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. 14, 16. If it's in there double, do I, if it's in both, do I still list it for or? Yes. Yes. If it's in either or, I list it. If it's in double, I still list it. I just list it once. Okay? B intersection C is B and C. And it's going to equal, what's in B and in C? Nope. And. Wait, hold on. Oh, just the empty set. It's the empty set. What can I then say about B and C? Yeah? I have a question to ask. Yeah? So if we like accidentally like repeat like two twice, let's say, do we lose marks? No. Okay. Just don't want to test it, won't show it. Yeah. So if the intersection of two sets results in the empty set, that means there's nothing in common, right? What can we say about those two sets then? They're disjoint. They're disjoint. So I can say that B and C are disjoint. Okay, I'm going to give you two more, and then we're going to notes. H, I want the complement of B intersection C, I, I want A and B or C. Try those two out. So with these ones where there was the not, I told you to list what the actual elements are in that. So the very first thing I would do before I would even do this question is I would go B not. B was all the even ones, correct? So not B would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. So I want, and C was odds less than, I can't even remember what I said. 10? Thank you. So I want what's in both. If I list them, it's a lot easier for me to not make a mistake. If you choose to not list this B, not B, there's a way higher chance of making an oopsie, missing a number. Okay? So we don't want that to happen. So I want what's in B and C. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. What if I ask for this?
and of not the empty. Because this n means the number of elements in. So when it's listed like this, I want the elements, correct? When it's listed like this, or this is asked, I want how many? Remember that? Because this could not be filled into a numeric response, but this could. Too many phones out. Put phones away. So I want A and B or C. So I need to do A and B first. What was in A and B? Just two. C is listed over here, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So I want what's in A and B, which is 2, or C, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So my answer is going to be 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so you have to do the A and B first because it's in brackets, and then you just do what it ends up being with the or of C. So I want you to flip to your notes, please. So, in here, we have to list the elements in P. What's in P again? Yeah, so anything that's in the P circle, right? It doesn't say P only, it's anything that's in the P circle. So I'm going to list 1, 2, 8, 9, 10. Then I have to list what's in Q. What's in Q? 1, 7, 10, and 29. And once again, I'm showing it in brackets because I'm listing the elements in the set. It's not asking me how many there are. It's asking me the set, right? What about P and Q? One, two, one and ten. P and Q. Remember that P and Q is the middle? One, ten. And remember, and is the eyeball. Here's my eyeball. So and, whether we're in a 2 Venn or a 3 Venn, and is always the eyeball shape. Everything that's in the eyeball. Okay? P or Q, what shape is that? What is or the shape of? No man. No man. Does it include everything in the two circles? Or do I exclude the eyeball? Yeah, if you excluded the eyeball, you'd exclude the middle of the stomach and it would just be a hill of snow. No. <laughs> so, not P. What's in not P? Yeah. 7, 11, 16, and 29. Yes, 7, 11, 16, and 29. I skipped the or for some reason. Oh, or is the snowman. So 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 29. Okay, not Q. All right, not Q. So in not Q, we have 2, 8, 9, 11, and 16. Okay, this is where it gets more complicated. Not P and not Q. So we would write this as not P and not Q. Oh, he always leaves at the worst time. He does. So if you have them both negated, we're paying attention, we're paying close attention. We don't ever want to do it in this form. So if both of them are negated, we're going to rewrite it. I'm going to explain to you how. So what you can do is you can actually, this is the exact same as going P, Q, flip this, so in this case, it would be an or. I put a not outside. So if they are both negated, you can rewrite them as not negated, flip the sign, and put negations outside. The reason why this is better is because this says not in P or Q. What is P or Q? What is or represented by? A snowman. So I want what's not in the snowman. 
No, muy bien. <laughs> so, not in P or Q is 11 and 16. So the answer to this is 11 and 16. So what I told you remembering here is if they are both negated, you can rewrite them not negated. Cody, paying attention. You were not here for it. So if they are not negated, you can write them, or if they are negated, you can write them both not negated, flip the and to an or, or flip the or to an and, and write it not outside. Okay? So if it's not or, then it would be everything outside the snowman. If it was not and, it would be everything outside the eyeball. Right? So it's easier if you make them actually both positives and negative. So here we have not P or not Q. So now, if they are both negated, which they are right now, we don't want to use it in this form, right? We want to change it to the form where they're both not negated. So we're going to go P, Q, what happens to the or? It becomes an and, and the not goes outside, which is actually easier. Because I'm going to say what's not in P and Q. P and Q is the eyeball. So I want you to list everything that's outside the eyeball or the and. So it's going to be 2, 7, 8, 9, 11, 16. So if they're both negated, that's what you're going to do. You're going to switch it. Okay? Now this is the difference. This one says not P or Q. So I have P or Q in brackets. And how do I write it? The not outside, which is actually the same as not PN, not Q. These two are the same, G and I. So I'm going to get 11. 16. And then this one, P and Q not. Oops, the bracket is going in the middle for no reason. It represents not P or not Q, so it's the same thing as above. 2, 7, 8, 9, 11, 16. All right, so it says, which two pairs of sets are identical? So you're going to put the star so you remember this, so you don't forget this. If you have not P and not Q, we will rewrite it as what? Uh, P and opposite. And opposite. Q and then bracket and then the little dash. Not. So P or Q not. Yes, we're going to write this down. Okay. Then if we have P not or Q not, that's the same as P and Q not. If you have the not completely outside, it's way easier to do. So some people will take these ones where it's like P or Q not, P and Q not, and make them be the first ones. Don't do that. You're making your life harder. Okay? The only time we're changing it is if they're both negated. We're going to rewrite it as the negation outside because it's just easier. Okay. Not, but my brain just thinks of like Borat, you know, and it's like, ah, <laughs> I say that. <laughs> <laughs> like Borat. It's like an extended movie. Oh, no, I've never seen it. So good. I don't believe you. <laughs> the diagram displays the number, you know, if you miss out, you really miss it. <laughs> ridiculousness of the class. This class seems real, really normal. If I pause it. Okay. <laughs> no, that scares me. The diagram displays the number of students who are members of the student council, which is S, and the number of students who are on the yearbook committee, which is Y. Answer the four questions. Don't ruin it for the people online. Okay. So, <laughs> How many are on student council? Don't give me the answer of 12. 13, 15. 15, 15. 13. That was the most random, not working any of these numbers out. Yeah. yeah. So there's 15. So if I said, this is the difference. How many are on student council? You'd say 15. If I said, how many are on student council only? You would say 12. Difference between only and student council. So if it doesn't say only, it's all of them in the circle. Then we have on both student council and yearbook committee. 
How many are in full? Three. Oh, oh, I added them all together. <laughs> That's or. You're there. On the yearbook, on the yearbook, what happened to my nose? I don't know. On the yearbook committee, but not on student council. Seven. Another way of saying that is yearbook committee only, right? On the yearbook committee, which is this circle, but not student council, which cuts that out. Answer? Yeah. I needed to go. Okay, <laughs> student council or yearbook. When it says or, what shape do we need? Snowman. Snowman. So everyone's giving me this answer 700 times in the wrong spot. What's the answer? 22. Okay. Now we have to set up our own Venn diagram. What did I tell you you have to start with always? The box. That is true. Why is it always like the weirdest answers that I've never heard before? Like, what do you do first? Open your eyes. Um, yeah. The box is the first thing you have to do. I was meaning like once the Venn diagram was drawn, what was the part you'd have to start with? The middle. The middle. But yes, the box is true. That's the way I asked that question. Uh, in a homeroom of 20 students, so 20 goes where? Trick question. 20 just exists. 20 just exists inside the box. So if you want to, you can put 20 out here. Because inside that box, you need to have 20 in the end. Yeah, I agree. Now, I said not inside. 15 take math, 12 take social, 10 take math and social. What are we comparing here? Math and... We're comparing math, social. We're comparing two subjects, so we have two circles. We are going to move to three circle bends as well. So we have to decide if it's a two circle bend or a three circle bend. This one's two. We always have to start in the, yeah. Stop. <laughs> okay. But we need to stop. Okay, where do we start? With the ten middle. the middle. Ten so we have to put the 10 in the middle, and then it doesn't say 15 take math only, does it? If it said 15 take, yeah, that's why I said 15 take math, that's the whole math circle. So I have to subtract. If they say 15 take math only, then I would put just 15 in there. Okay? But 15 take math, this is math. We happen to have 10 of them taking social at the same time, don't really care. I already have 10 in here. I can't double count those people, right? So how many would be in math only? Five. Okay, now social, 12 takes social. So how many take social only? Two. And then what did I tell you you can't forget to do? The outside. So, so there's going to be three who take neither, math or social. Boom. <sighs> okay. Now, this one's a starring question. Questions come up like this all the time. They're ones when you're given the Venn diagram, you're given information, but you're not given the and portion. And we always start with the and, correct? In this case, we're not going to be given it. So it says, in a survey of 400 households, so I'm going to put 400 up here, because inside here I need to have 400. Two hundred and eighty-five have PBRs. So in here I need to have two eighty-five. And then multifunctional printers three hundred and twenty. But can I put those numbers in right now? No, because I don't know how many are in. Full. Walk it. Then No, you fold it. And I'm reporting that. Um and then sixty-three are in neither household. So in here I have to have four hundred students we agree or 400 households sorry 
Now, you can do this. This is the key thing. You're given the different total number of P, you're given the total number of M, and then you're given the amount outside. We agree? Yes. 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 So, <laughs> so we need I, to have. I didn't say anything. I was actually going to text my phone. It's time for class. Okay. So you have to be given how many are in P, how many are in M, how many are in neither. P, M, neither. So what I need you to do is add all three of them up. Go ahead. So add them up. We're going to add up 63, the people on the outside. That's more. Yep. Plus 285. Plus 320. So we have to be given all three. You guys, pay attention. You have to be given all three. So you're going to have, you have to be given what's in P total, M total, and how many are not in either. So we're going to add them up. We're going to go 63 plus 285 plus 320. If you add up all the ones in P, M, and not in both, and it's over 400, you've now just found out how many are in both. So if you add up the ones in P, you add up the ones in M, you add up how many are out here, it's going to be more than 400, correct? Yes. Yeah. How much is it? 668. So that's how many people, it's like if they put in a ticket for owning a PBR and they t put in a ticket for owning a multifunctional printer, if you put in the tickets for both and then you t put in the people who put in tickets for none of them and you add them up, that 668, subtract out 400 is what? Yeah. So 268 in the middle. So like I said to you, you have to be given the amount for both and given the amount in neither. Now, if we take this, we can now figure out what's in the two separate ones, right? So in PBR, I should have 285. I'm going to take off the 268. How much is left over? No, nope. Yeah. All right. M has 320. I take 320 and I subtract off 268. 52. All right. Now we can answer any question. How many people are have just a PBR only? 17. 17. How many have a multifunctional printer only? 32. How many have a printer or a PBR? Uh, or 69. What? <laughs> <laughs> or is what shape? Snowman. Snowman. So what am I going to have to do? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 337. So you can either add them all up, or you can take the total of 400 and subtract off the ones outside, and you get 337. Okay?